Rights uh, Month. Uh, the theme, Power, Progress and Change, and we're really looking forward to hear more of these uh, inspiring ladies. Just some practical information. During the, Mac, the webinar, please mute all microphones, um, because otherwise we get a lot of background noise. We don't want that. Use your chat box for, uh, for any questions, and only the speakers can use that camera. If you have any objections that this uh, webinar is going to be recorded, please tell us now. Yeah? Okay, for those of you who don't know me yet, uh, my name is, uh, is Ingun Bol. I'm the founder of Female Wave of Change. And normally I, uh, I play a role in all these events, but uh, for now, uh, I'm going to sit back and relax and enjoy uh, everything that will be going on. So um, the floor is yours, ladies. Okay, so um, thank you so much, Ingrid, for joining us and for this initial introduction. Um, I'm so glad for reasons today. Uh, first of all, we are going to establish the a female waves of change Pakistan chapter. Um, we are launching this almost in this evening. Uh, I welcome Shida and Zoya uh, on board um, and Gulnaz as well. And the second thing is this is our first panel, online panel, and this is be a milestone for us in the upcoming events as well. Um, um, yes, today we are we are talking about issues as well, but we are going to share some stories from the stories that those are giving us hope, uh, more motion to uh, continue the work we're doing and uh, to continue it, you know, for, and to engage many more people and more communities with us. Um, so I'll start with Zoya. Uh, if Zoya can introduce herself and can share with us about the women in Punjab, Punjab is the province of Pakistan, and she can elaborate all these things. And so Zoya. Hello everyone, I'm Zoya Tariq from Lahore, Pakistan. I'm a gender activist and uh, a TV host, an editor, a writer, and I also work on radio. My work is focused upon women empowerment and the role of media. And I speak and write on it whenever I can and wherever I can. So first I'm gonna discuss the issues we face in Punjab, the challenges and the positive impact our work has on uh, the community especially the women so the issues we face uh, in Punjab in all over Pakistan uh, goes like this that Pakistan is the third most dangerous country for women to live in so when it comes to Punjab every day six women are murdered or face the threat of attempted murder in the name of honor. Eight women are raped, 11 are assaulted, and at least 32 are abducted for one reason or the other, according to the report published by the Law and Order Wing of uh, SMU, that is Special Monitoring Unit in Punjab. According to uh, the Orat Foundation, which is a leading NGO when it comes to women's rights, 8,500 women face violation in Pakistan on a yearly basis. And most of the cases reported are of domestic violence, which happens inside their homes by their loved ones. So these are the issues. Now I'll talk about in Punjab while working on women empowerment. The first and foremost is very interesting. It's the mindset and mentality of uh, the Punjabi man. Because when we talk about women empowerment in families and we try to convince the men to let their women work outside, let their girls pursue career and uh, pursue their dreams, we can see that they are insecure and there is a fear that the women are going to be westernized, whatever that means. And they are going to, then they will not let the men in the family control them. And they will uh, demand rights, reproductive rights, and uh, the right to choose a career and a life partner. So here media can uh, play 
a very important role by showing male role models, the husbands, the fathers, the brothers who have encouraged and who are encouraging the women at their home to go and pursue their dreams and have a successful career. And the second challenge that we face, another, it's very interesting because it's part of Punjabi culture. It is that uh, the parents of girls invest thousands of dollars on their daughters when it comes to their weddings, when it comes to their jewelry, when it comes to their clothes, finding the right partner, going, uh, ma making them look beautiful. But when you try to convince them that they should invest some money on the education and maybe skill development so that the girl can uh, make a living of her own, it gets very complicated because uh, in Punjab, we raise daughters to become nice, beautiful, submissive wives, not strong, financially empowered individuals. Uh, again, media can, uh, media, especially our TV dramas and TV commercial can play a very important role there. Because if we start showing uh, girls who uh, have successful careers, who are studying abroad, getting degrees, because we don't see that in our TV plays. We don't see that in our TV commercials. All we see in TV commercials is the daughter is getting married and the son is going abroad for the education, which creates a very negative impact. As media is a, a very strong medium uh, for the people sitting at home, and the messages we send across have this uh, profound impact on the viewers' minds and their perceptions. Okay, the third uh, challenge that we face, I'll be quick. It's the women lack of control over resources and the knowledge systems and the land rights and the property rights and the banking systems and how to take a loan. We need to develop and create short videos, training videos, that can help the women folks sitting at home in front of their TV screens. So then they can learn and they can gain that confidence to go out and uh, make a career instead of sitting at home and saying that, okay, I don't know anything. I, don't, I know nothing about banking. I know nothing about the property rights. So let the son or the brother own all the property. So, and the last, but definitely not the least challenge that we face is that women in Punjab, they have this inability to organize themselves in the public spheres, uh, both in the urban and the rural context. And if you add to it the media messages, which keep on reinforcing uh, in the girl's mind that they are unsafe, they are the weaker sex, they are insecure about their bodies, and the world outside is a bad place, and they are safer at home. It becomes very challenging. We need to spread the message. We need to send the message across that it's a safe world. Go out, first dreams. And uh, again, this is where the media can uh, play a vital role because uh, we need to tell the families uh, via mass media messages that an empowered woman is uh, someone who has control over her reproductive rights, over her... Uh, finances and uh, she contributes to the uh, to the nutrition to the education and to the health of her children indirectly contributing to the national income growth so uh, these are the challenges we have been working on it now i'll come to uh, the positive impact which our work has i'll come up with two examples because i know we don't have, have that much time one is an initiative by the previous government that was called WOW. It is Women on Wheels. Women were given motor motorbikes, about 400 motorbikes in uh, all the cities of Punjab, including uh, Sargoda, Multan, Faisalabad, Lahore, and Pindi. 400 bikes have been uh, distributed so that the women have their own safe and independent mode of transport transportation and they are uh, no longer going to beg or request the male member of the society to drop them or pick them to the educational institute or at the workplace. Another thing is uh, another uh, positive impact are the uh, these women, these violence against women 
centers that are supposed to be established in each and every district of Punjab. One of them is operating right now, and that is uh, in Multan, which is southern Punjab. We have this violence against women center where uh, a domestic violence victim, the moment she enters, or someone who has a threat that she'll be killed by her family in the name of honor, she enters that place, and the moment she enters that center, she has all access, totally free of cost, to the legal aid. There's a female judge. She can register an FIR. She can file an FIR. There are women constables. She's provided with a psychologist, with a psychiatrist, given medical treatment, given shelter if she needs it. And a vocational center has also been established there where she can learn a skill or two in order to make a living. So these are two uh, positive impacts of our work. And uh, we are trying hard to tell the people in Punjab that uh, a strong woman does not weaken the society. She makes the society a better and safer place to live. Thank you so much, Shah. Over to you. I can't hear you, Shah. So okay. sorry, I can't. Yeah. Oh, okay. So thank you, Zoya, for sharing all these. This is an amazing insight we are having from you. Um, we will be coming with question. Any of us, you know, in the panel, even Ingwin may ask something further to understand the things you have mentioned, and maybe we will have, we'll be having some other people to join us later on. And if they will be having any questions, we will continue the discussion. So uh, we will be coming back to you. And now I would like to go to Gulnaz. Uh, Gulnaz is here with us, and I hope she 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 got it that what she is going to share with us. So Gulnaz. Can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Okay, okay. So um, if you talk about sin, so problems actually for women are similar. Uh, my name is Gulnaz Sheikh. I belong to Sindh province. My district is uh, uh, Hyderabad. And I have bared all those things which all women are bearing on them. I bear them on myself. I started my journey. The house where uh, people were not ready to give rights to a woman. I was uh, one and only in my house who was getting education. Uh, by the grace of my mother uh, because I was the youngest child in my house and they already ruined the life of my brothers and sister already and they now learned that now she is the uh, last child and she should educate and we should save her. So um, my uh, the issues in sin uh, as Zoya told us, are similar, but a little bit, uh, I can say, uh, harsh in Sindh. So the uh, one thing we call Vattasatta, Vattasatta means exchange marriages. You, uh, a brother, uh, give a, a sister to another man and he takes his sister to his uh, marriage. So this is like uh, they are selling a woman and those women are like dependent on each other. If one is beating one person, one woman, the other will beat his sister. So this is my, my sisters uh, bear this thing. And my sister-in-law, I grow up seeing all these things. So then I decided that I, I will go to the development sector. I will go to the activism and I will uh, uh, learn things, how to help myself and how to help all these women. So other thing in Sindh is honor killing. Honor killing is a big issue in our, our uh, district or our uh, uh, province. And, uh, and the other child marriages, and because uh, Sindh has 40% minority people, Hindu people live in Sindh. So there are so many issues with, they have issue of child marriages a lot. And they have issue of uh, forced marriages. 
so people uh, in muslim and hindus what happens the uh, muslim people abduct the uh, hindu girls and then they force them to marry uh, they don't see their ages they they don't see that they are ready for marriage or not and then law protect them and when they go to uh, courts uh, courts say that it's it's her will it's a free will uh, so they, they, they that's uh, the issue in uh, sindh and the other is nowadays cyber crime is uh, uh, a very uh, it's it's an issue in sin because there are so many uh, cases happen where the people each other but they have made videos for girls and then they given it in the on the internet without her consent of course and then it made uh, her life mess so sexual harassment yes in a biggest city uh, biggest university in hyderabad university of jamchora nowadays two three cases happen sexual harassment and uh, then they uh, one of girl has to suicide because she didn't get any uh, success or didn't have any uh, justice uh, for her so and others little issues as well like desire of male child is still there because of uh, male dominancy so i will say uh, these these issues are little bit similar similar and uh, for a, every every places so the reasons i have found is male dominancy the patriotic society and especially in send a feudal feudal area the feudal people the agri agriculture society is there so the feudal people see woman as a land they see woman as a uh, as a property so uh, nowadays it it is little uh, less but uh, previously the issue was if feudals didn't want to marry her sister because they had to give the piece of land with them so they used to marry their sisters with the quran the religious book so that they will not marry with each other the uh, uh, biggest biggest issue also is a uh, education lack of education lack of awareness in in our uh, uh, province because in male also there is a uh, less education but in women there is a lack of education and uh, what we can say every institution is unaware if you talk about education curriculum talks about it that woman is weak and woman is under men if you talk about family institution there we have to learn that we are under a men uh, i i uh, i can give a example of mine when i was studying uh, my brothers that time my brothers have no issue but once i went to university they had an issue and somehow i i started um mobilizing them and i get uh, uh, permission to but once uh, an opportunity came to me that was uh, uh, local body elections and i thought to uh, contest election and i started that and at that time my brothers had issue and they think that she will be powerful and people will know him and how we brothers will be like uh, will uh, people will know us with her name it cannot be so these these are issues with every woman there so uh, if we talk about uh, positive changes one thing uh, is good in sindh which uh, zoya has told that uh, but in sindh we are a little free free human we can easily go to uh, the agricultural lands 
we we the so much and uh, we are doing jewelry so i think let we are little free so we can go the places so uh, but because the initiative we don't have much uh, opportunities to to learn but uh, but women has a free <laughs> and um, uh, the i the good thing that women's networking men always had a networking and they uh, solve their issues through their networking but women doesn't have and one thing uh, they uh, give to to women or they uh, they told women that woman is woman's uh, enemy now it's not like this many women has started many networks they are meeting each other they are meeting within province they are meeting uh, nationwide and now they are meeting uh, internationally as well like we are meeting here and now if there are problems they are solving them to talking by with women as uh, only and they don't have to talk to men but they have to talk to women and they are getting help as well not only from their province national and internationally as well so that was from me and if there was there will be a question i will be answer thank you yes thank you so much gulnaz it was it was great uh, you know uh, you mentioned a lot of things and we will be coming back to you with comments because ingwen she is very carefully listening to all these things um it it, it seems like she is uh, you know this is a factor for all of us so uh, yes women issues are global issues almost like even zoya and uh, what you what zoya said what you said there are a lot of similarities in terms of the progress we had and even in terms of the challenges we are facing so um we will be discussing these things but now we have another lady with us she is also a brave lady courageous lady shahida shah we would like her to share you know the same things like with us so shahida shah are you here yes okay come uh hi everyone i'm shahida shah from uh, khyber pakhtunkhwa uh, the area which is near afghanistan uh i'm working for women empowerment since long and nowadays i'm focusing on the economic empowerment of women women because that is the root of real empowerment well let me discuss the challenges that uh, we face in our work as uh, my area is near afghanistan and the whole region is a conflict region region we all uh, are victims of uh, terrorism and then war on terrorism and then this challenge is multiplied by the challenge of poverty and patriarchy so the women of our region are facing the more uh, trouble than other parts of the pakistan and that's why i chose to work for the tribal women of fata and the min minority women here the minority women are the non muslim women living in kp and ex fata okay uh, most of the uh, ch challenges were that these women are uh, facing the poverty and already facing the the pressure of culture and patriarchy and then they were welcomed with not welcomed but they but they were forced to face the terrorism and then war on terrorism although war on terrorism is an international war a war a global war but the women of pakistan and of afghanistan and especially the women of fata are the worst victims they are facing a uh, physical issues psychological issues and financial issues they became itps in internally displaced persons 
and uh, so many, many many issues that we can, we cannot wrap in these few min minutes and then the non muslim women living in this region of kp and fata they are facing much more issues so um, i chose to fight for their constitutional rights that why can't they get their rights which are en enjoyed or entertained by the rest of the women of pakistan or at inter international level uh, level well after my work with uh, all the team and, and net uh, networks here our positive impacts was that we work for the fcr we worked against FCR, we worked for FATA reforms, we worked with uh, lo local people, we worked with politicians, we worked with media, we worked with parliamentarians, and as a res result, the merge of FATA into KP happened, which was a historical e event. And the men of all these women who worked in this hist historical move movement were really thankful to these women. And uh, the other positive impact was that the women who were uh, transferred from their grassroots level, from their villages to the camps as an IDPs, there they got uh, awareness uh, sessions from uh, state, from gov government, from NGOs, which increased their awareness about their rights, about hygiene, about life facilities. So they were in introduced to a new world. Now when they went back, so now they are demanding the same facilities and the same rights, which is a, a positive change. And uh, as far as uh, the non-Muslim women are concerned. So after I worked with, with them, as a res result, they got um, uh, their, uh, their, their properties, which were uh, having uh, issues with the land mafia. So we worked with the party parliamentarians and they passed a bill in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa uh, Assembly and they made a standing com committee for the minority rights and they solved their is issues. And then they were uh, uh, forced to study is Islamic studies in schools because, because in documents they uh, they were uh, they were having a, a facility to take a separate sub subject, but there was no teach teacher for those subjects. So we uh, worked for that, and after that, the KP gov government worked on this is issue, and they uh, uh, gave them their special uh, teachers for the special um, sub subjects for the minorities. And they were facing the documentation issues. I mean, they were living in Fata since more than 80 years, but they were not have, having their domicile. And it was leading to the issues of their marriage, of their divorce, of their property, etc. Et so all these work together for a positive change and of course the, uh, the ch challenges are much more worse than the cause positive impacts because, because the ch challenges are more than those area, area who face uh, the co conflict around the world because these women, women are facing not only a conflict but also poverty and patriarchy so now uh, I'm thinking of, about this issue that if we make them strong e economically, if we work on economic empowerment, it will make them independent, which will make them more strong. And they will be able to uh, take their own decision and go further in their life. I think it is much uh, about me. So Shad, please. Um, okay, thank you. Um, thank you so much, Shahida, for sharing all these things. Like, 
um, the progress as well, the, the struggle you have been doing um, in a very critical part of the country, you know, ex parta, ex parta, you know, so uh, the, the region where there was a big the vacuum of law, like not having even the uh, constitution of Pakistan, which guarantees a lot of human rights, women rights and everything. So, um, and that has just recently happened that it was extended to the FATA and FATA was merged into Khabar Pakhtunkhwa and of course, um, people like you are part of that struggle. So you are part of the history uh, and you're still, you know, a living legend with us. So, uh, Ingwen, before coming to you, I would like to um, just, you know, um, aid, you know, uh, to the things we all have mentioned. So, I would say, yes, you know, um, when we talk about uh, Pakistan, so uh, Punjab, Sin, uh, the, even while, you know, living in one country, we all four women, we are representing different cultures, um, different situations. So, um, when Zoe was mentioning about the mobility, so I would say, yes, mobility is a very critical thing and uh, most of the areas in Pakistan because mobility is not like just going out of house. Mobility is accessing education, accessing facilities, accessing, you know, uh, everything. So if you are not like, uh, if you're not allowed in the first stage and if then you're allowed, but outside the mobility mechanism, if that is mostly run by men and you have a culture where women cannot actually interact with men, women cannot actually talk to even men. So then it becomes, you know, a big critical problem. So I would say, yes, mobility is a big issue. Um, so, and then another thing is economic dependency of women. We, we you know, like, um, we have this right to inheritance, everything is part of our religion. And this even like uh, now the Punjab government, uh, even the national government, they have Ministry of Human Rights, they have initiated recently. Uh, just yesterday, I was uh, tweeting about this, that they have launched this uh, women, is, um, and they were actually engaging the uh, Islamic Ideological Council, which role is very much prominent and speaking about women's rights and they should speak out. So that was encouraging. So women, majority of women in my country, they are dependent on the income of their male family member. So a woman who is with that run for public office or I'm going to have some higher education and she would actually go for from a process like many people she's dependent on because the family that where they need to invest their resources and of course like when it comes to invest the resources they will invest the resources on boys and men because men and boys they can easily bring back the income the profit to the family so this is another thing that women you know economic empowerment of women is very much necessary which Shaida was saying that she's focusing in all we women we we're speaking about our own economic empowerment as well and then you know about the other women as well because this is giving you the liberty to take your own decisions um, and then, you know, the, another issue we're facing, which is, you know, all like everywhere in Pakistan, that is a lack of women representation in both formal and informal institutions. Regardless of, you know, how many women are sitting right now in the parliament and the provincial assemblies and the national assemblies and even the councils, but, but the right, you know, the... the uh, the right to exercise the, the, the authority to, to take decisions or to take part in the decision making process that is yet you know a long journey we have to still make so uh, this is actually the thing that if you would not have women in uh, in the required number on each decision making table this is why you know this will translate into the communities that the you know this is like some some like you know a very short I mean, a small amount of the development or everything that will go to the community. So the thing is, we don't have women on every table. And then uh, the inhuman practices, like, you know, regardless of lack of uh, education facilities, health and employment, all these things, then these inhuman practices like honor killing and swara, swara, which is like, you know, giving girls in exchange of to end enmities and, um, you know, conflicts, to resolve conflict, family conflicts, uh, even giving very young girls and small, like, you know, the girl, she's, just recently born, the family, the, the family will decide that okay, they will give this her this this girl to end the enmity, and then the early child marriages. Uh, so all these problems are going on in everywhere, and I would say not only in Pakistan, across South Asia, I would say, uh, because we have the same climate, I would say the same ecosystem where women are facing almost these challenges. And um, even when I'm meeting women from other countries, they also even elaborate these same problems. So we, you know, a lot of things are similar, but I'll just share a few things, you know, like women like Shahida, Zoya, Gunnaz, 
these women are you know they are the real stories they are the stories from the ground and they are what actually they they're just representing here there are many women they are doing the struggle so we have made actually a lot of victories and i would say recently this victory is enormous when we had for the first time in the uh, for the political thing that when the in the ecp we were having this 10% of women turn out like it it is compulsory it is required and if this will be not not in the polling you know the, the, the uh, during the voting time so that constituency that will the, the election on that constituency will be declared null and void i'm actually wrapping up quickly even because i think we have time issues so i'm just quickly saying that now we have this 10% quota of women uh must vote in each uh, constituency that is the success for us and if not there will be there will be a reelections and then now having women 5% of women quota in the general seats that is another success for the first time in pakistan women in a huge number they win and they were, they run for the public office they couldn't win majority of them yes they because they were given the seats where there were less chances for women to run the election campaign successfully and to win from those areas but i would say even like you know running for elections from those areas was enormous so there are many good things happening we leaders are hopeful and we are still having that motivation to go along and uh, now i would like to go to ingwen um that what is her reflection and insight and she also must share with us about the women living in netherland that how how life is there for women thank you oh ladies how can i just contribute to such an amazing you know so, so i feel so humbled and um so impressed by your stories you know it is it's so amazing and i almost feel ashamed that there are not many people listening and i'm i'm sure that i'm going to make a lot of people listen to your stories because you know it is um You know, I applaud you for everything that you do. You live in, 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 you know, the circumstances that you live in is, is, is almost depressing, you know, and depression is one of the issues that we're dealing with uh, right now in the world. But if you see what is, what is happening in your country and even, you know, with the differences within the certain areas, it's, you know, it's huge, it's huge. And, you know, I just, wish I could just solve one of these issues that are going on so that you know that you can take a step forward and um, you know this it makes me emotional I'm sorry <laughs> I'm a very emotional person so this is uh, you know you know that things are going on and you know that these issues that there are a lot of issues but um, yeah, well, I'm, I'm going to share, you know, I can share something about the things that are going on here in the Netherlands. And, um, you know, of course, there are a lot of things going on. If you, if you talk about equality, you know, we, we think we are equal to men, but we're not. <laughs> if you talk about uh, violence against women, you know, you think it doesn't happen here, but it does. Uh, violence within you know the families and you know there's 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 houses here as well you know these centers where women can go if it gets really bad in 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 their homes because we need to if uh, if you if you look at violence against girls you know here of course there is there's stories well stories issues about rape and against the lover boys i don't know if you know that expression the lover boys who really take advantage in in all kinds of ways of, of girls you know and forced prostitution and um you know it's it's here as well and you know the refugees you know i've been talking about it yesterday in one of the events uh, we're talking about the refugees here in the Netherlands and the whole procedure how this works to get people settled in in their new country. You know, it's 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 terrible. You know, <laughs> if you were here, they're almost treated as as criminals. So it's, you know, it's the the stories are long and and it it, 
it's maybe it sounds like there's um, uh, it, it is totally different here uh, and in a way it is of course you know uh, here if you talk about mobility of course you know we are you know we can go wherever we are if you talk about education you know uh, boys girls women you know everyone is is you know there's this whole system of education and everyone can join you know and it's you know, it's not that expensive, for, so it's it's available for each and every one. You know, and you see that more and more girls they go to university, they have their diplomas, but when they are finished, you know, it's like they want a part-time job, and you know, it's it's you know, you you feel like okay, come on, now it's really time to show up and to really start doing what you need to do, but they they're not. And some of there are, you know, I make it very black and white and it's not black and white. Of course, there are take, there are girls who are really, uh, who are really uh, stepping into their leadership and, and, and stepping, you know, being responsible for their own future, for the future of their families and of the country and, you know, and of the world. I always like to think big, um, but it's not all of them, you know, they, it's, they, they really take take to want to take the shortcut you know the easy way and um so there are a lot of things that are you know a lot better here the facilities are there the system is there you know and yes there are more people more women in the boardroom yes there are more women in politics but if you look at i'm always saying you know if you look really at the, the number of women that can be in the boardroom and women that can be in politics, you know, it is such a small number. So we also have to focus on all the other women. You know, it's my, it might be 2% of the total population that, you know, that, that has the option, that has the choice to, to be in politics and, and be in, in, in the boardroom or, you know, to have that big career. So we can only focus on that 2% or we can focus on all these uh, other uh, women who are, um, you know, really have to, to, to join in to, to make things happen. If you look at the female wave of change, um, you know, we have that global platform, that global movement, and uh, we really want to, to um, to join women and organizations and women from all walks of life. You know, there for us, there is no religions, you know, there are there, but there's no cultures, there's no religions, there's no, you know, we each, each, we all have our own backpack, but we are all women. And we women should join and be powerful together, be strong together. So we have to get these stories out and uh, make women more open and listen uh, to all everything that is happening and, and use our feminine values and our feminine energy to make those changes. And as I said, you know, I wish I had that magic wand and to just change the world overnight, but we can't, you know, we have to be, realistic and i hate that word realistic because your reality is so totally different from mine but you know each and every change that we can make and the waves that we bring into the world that is going to change to make the changes eventually and you know i always say we can always look at what is and fight the system and fight what is but what about creating the new? What about creating those new opportunities? If I look at what, um, try, um, let me look at my notes. Zoya told me about the motorbikes. You know, this is amazing. You know, 400 mo motorbikes. How many women are there in, in, in Pakistan? You know, there's millions of you. It's a huge country compared to the, to, to the Netherlands. 400 motorbikes, this is, fantastic you know it is fantastic but there should be millions you know <laughs> so it is it's it's a great start and you know 400 women with a motorbike and giving them the opportunity to 
follow their education or do you know join politics or join groups that really make things happen that is very very important so we can keep on fighting the old and we keep can keep on fighting the system but if you really hear uh, what is going on they expect the change in the world to come from the women if we think keep on thinking the old way we're never going to make it happen because then we really have to focus every day on what is going wrong we have to divert that and refocus on it's not what is wrong it is what is what can we make right and that is very important and i think that especially if you look at the female wave of change this is really what we are focused on on creating that new and you know when i was um, i was writing and writing and you know there was more and more to that list of what is what is going on and you know it's i wish i would again i wish it would just change it overnight but you know we can't but we can join the wisdom of the women we can join our femininity we can join our feminine values and again and we have the discussion over and over again it's not only women who have that feminine energy and have those feminine values Shah told me that her own husband really is supporting women and he wants to speak out there are more women men in your country that you know that that starts with you know supporting women and and you know they are the strong they are the strong ones but because especially in a patriarchal organization uh, society like yours you need this group of men you need it to grow because they can make the changes also so we need to work together and i saw one of the the remarks with with one of the posts on the on, on the social media, we, uh, someone who said, Shad, you need these, to get these men involved. Shad knows that she needs to get the men involved. And especially the men who are thinking more human. And I, I, you know, I always prefer to call it the more feminine way, the more feminine energy, the feminine values. But if you really look at human rights, and if you really look at what kind of values there are, there are more human values, you know? And I, I don't know if you are all mothers, but if you are not a mother, you might have a niece or cousin or, you know, the, our, our sons and our daughters. Uh, and for me, it feels from, I'm going to be a grandmother. So that is very, that's next generation. You know, what we all want is to create a better world for our children and for the next generation to come. And even if you don't have, Children, you know, we, you want to create that environment where everyone can live in peace. And, you know, we're always having World Peace Day. We want to create that, that, that peace. We want to create that safe space. I heard you mention that. Uh, I, we want to create uh, a situation that you have a roof over your head. You have food on the table. You can send your kids to school. You have a good healthcare system. And there's a lot going on that we don't need. <laughs> you know, it's, it, it, we have created this, this, this environment that we are focusing on, on, I believe, very wrong things. But we really all want to leave that legacy. And this is where we come in as women. And I really strongly, strongly believe that if we start working together, start using our feminine values, start using our feminine energy and created collaboration and you know i wish i could change your world but i can offer you that platform and make your voices heard because this is absolutely something that we need to be doing so share your stories and let's collaborate in you know getting to you know i always call it rehumanize the world because we if we start rehumanizing the world we start focusing on that safe place and of on economic empowerment and on you know women that have the freedom to move wherever they go and you know women supporting each other but men and women supporting each other so uh 
I think that is really the direction that we should be going. I see there's a lot of typing in the chat box. <laughs> um, but you, you might be, uh, I see um, Gula, but Shad, maybe you want to uh, say something about what is being typed and uh, <coughs> Okay. Thank you, Ingwin. Thank you for the support. Thank you for the initiating Female Waves of Change. And uh, we are so happy to be here with Female Waves of Change uh, because uh, what Gulnaz actually mentioned earlier, the power of networking, the power of sharing, the power of connecting with each other. Um, and while connecting with each other, we will never forget to engage men. Uh, I received the, some comments on, on my LinkedIn post that um, in the panel, there are only like women, why um, no men are there. Um, so uh, I would say actually, um, this is actually not the last program. This is one of the, the first program um, in, uh, in the future. We will be going, you know, we will be going to have the dialogue with men as well, having them in these platform, because that is the, the thing. And there are um, so many progressive men in our society. They are actually supporting us. They're standing beside us and they're supporting us. So we will be, we will never actually forget them because when we say feminism, feminism is not actually only about women. This is about the society. This is about the world. This is about everyone. So we'll never forget them. And we have one of the participants here with us, Gula Afridi. She has highlighted uh, very genuine issues, uh, um, mentioning Pashtun woman, um, that she is not getting proper education. She is not having the right to inheritance. Um, and she is, you know, she is having all the, the lack of job opportunities, uh, lack of employment and all these things. So, uh, yes, Gula, uh, I would like, I hope you are here with us. You are listening to her. Um, all these women here together are actually just contributing their part to all these problems. Alone, we can think together a lot. We have now this few Pakistan chapter as well, and we new makers, a lot of new makers. Um, we will be sharing with each other that what what role actually we can play because if you have heard what England she said that uh, if we all will say that the situation is very worst. Uh, and we will not decide about our role, that what role we can play. Even that can be a small thing. That can be a very, you know, a little thing. This is not because we say that drops, you know, they, they make oceans. So um, you're welcome. Your comments are welcome. Your suggestions are welcome. You're welcome even to the Female Waves of Change. You can access us. We have the Facebook page. You see me. I am also on the social media. Um, we are going to have a lot of sessions about Female Waves of Change and even... Um, Gulnaz, she has recently started the Sister Leagues, Sisters League, um, because by having the Sister League in Pakistan, what actually her slogan is that she wants to support every woman, every girl, and her slogan is to celebrate actually what women are already doing. So Gulnaz, we would love to, um, how we female waves of change and Sister League, we can actually do something together. And here, I actually, I will just throw one question and then I would like all of you to uh, reflect on this, that uh, the session of the, 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 the purpose of today's panel is not to discuss and raise the issues. Some actions as well. Okay. Before leaving this session today, this panel today, what actually actions are we looking forward in the future where people views of change can play some role or other, you know, the civil society in Pakistan, the organizations working for uh, women rights in Pakistan, what they can do or what do or what female waves of change can do. So we would like you to hear um, from all of you that what your actions, uh, what actions you suggest in the light of the, the problem, the challenges you all mentioned. So anyone, you know, who would like to speak, I would say, okay, Shahida. So we will unmute Shahida and I'm going to mute myself. <laughs> okay, fine. Well, I think that uh, through our, our work and through civil society and through female waves of change, we should work not only against patriarchy and poverty through e economic empowerment, but we also need to tell the national and international policy makers that how their wrong policies affect women at all level level, especially at grassroots level level. 
So they need to change the policies, the wrong policies, and please, they need to change the policy makers. We request them. So, I, so we need to join hands. We all women at local level, at national level, at international level, and we should work against patriarchy. We should work against poverty, and we should work against wrong policies. Thank you so much. Yes, Gulnaz, you can uh, unmute yourself, Ingwin, if, okay, yeah. Thank you, uh, Shad, for giving this uh, wonderful uh, platform. So I have only two uh, suggestions, as you already told uh, everyone that I have started that Sisters League. It is about to help sisters, celebrate sisters. So I think these collaborations uh, with uh, sisters internationally can be uh, the information dissemination, whatever we are achieving here should go to the to internationally somehow through us through the, these uh, international forums and then the profiling women who are achieving a lot, but people are not uh, uh, listening to them or people are not uh, uh, like like they are so successful but nobody knows them and sometimes they become the, the i'm sorry i'm short of the word but but it is a necessary that the women are doing a good work they should they should be profiled and they should be uh, uh, meet to other other people uh, through this internet so that the other women can get inspired they can get inspired from them so these two things we can do the the uh, profile woman and the information dissemination from internationally to here and here to international so each other we can learn thank you Thank you, Gulna. So, Zoya, can you unmute yourself? And we would like to hear from you. Can you hear me now? Okay. Um, I would suggest that we should have more on the ground events. Online events are fine, but on the ground events, a female wave of change, where women can come up with their stories. It's not only against patriarchy, because we also have so many women who are affected by terrorism. Who are affected by extremism and like India uh, just mentioned mothers I think mothers can play such a crucial role in shaping up the mind of their children and uh, especially in our country in context of uh, terrorism we can do a lot and uh, we have on the ground event where uh, women come and uh, we share stories not that uh, uh, it's not that we're gonna offer some professional advice but all these women need most of the time is just someone who's going to listen someone who is a good listener who's going to listen with compassion and they don't have anyone like that we can be those people for them we uh, female wave of change ambassadors can do that so i suggest having more on ground events thank you Okay, so Ingwin, I'm amazed to see, to have all these uh, very you know grounded and very genuine um, call for actions and um, yes, again together we all together are going to work on this and I'm so happy today that female waves of change will now you know extend itself in Pakistan having all these uh, brilliant women. So um, okay, if uh, okay, Gula is here. She is commenting her comments you know her queries uh, her suggestions are very great and i wish she could share she could speak here with us um, but i think but okay so before going to england like i want you to reflect on the actions we all have elaborated uh, i would actually you know congratulate all these women today 
uh, this is the era of technology and I was a little bit, you know, I was having this fear that while having this online conference, maybe we will end up, you know, not getting online and all these things. And uh, even I had some problem today and Shahida, she helped me out with that today. So thank you, Shahida, for that. And I'm so happy all these women, even making, you know, uh, this discussion very successful online. And I agree, Zoya, that we need to do both of this because I said that, you know, like this, this, this is so strong that listening and hearing you know stories from England because maybe some of the people in Pakistan they say the women living in Netherlands maybe she's having that that life she's not facing a lot of problem and only we were facing the problem so so this is actually the power of listening you and Gulna said and that is powerful um, we can even uh, Zoya we, next time we can even uh, have this call for stories because. Um, from the from the recent one of the recent event of, of the female waves of change, I was able to listen to very powerful stories, and then after that, uh, I I was just reading that the thread, and in comments, a lot of women from different part of the world, they shared their stories on the on on that wall, um, and that was they were so powerful. So we can start even documenting. Documented, documenting the stories of struggle of these women, and somewhere, somewhere we can compile this on this female waves of change, change platform because not only to encourage them but to encourage other people as well to uh, come and you know just step forward and take some action. So um, yes, and now, now I would like to ask Ingwin to reflect on these actions. What, how she's feeling about it? Well, thank you. It's. Um... Yes, well, very powerful. And, you know, I do agree that um, to really make changes, you have to work on all levels. You know, you have to work with the organizations and the system that's already there. And we have to create a new. So it's, that's very important. If you look at female wave of change, we always say we are high tech and high touch. So that means that we work online, but we also work in the area, so we need to have that high touch. You know, I'm literally someone who needs to touch someone, you know, so it's, that is very important as well. And one of our, I think one of the things that we women are very good in is, one is storytelling, and second, it is listening. You know, we are way good, better listeners than men, so we have to use that, you know, we're, and you know, I love to hear all these stories and uh, we're also thinking about, we're taking the first steps of creating the female wave of change storytelling book, because, and we need the stories there, but we also need them online, you know, it is so powerful to hear your stories and to share them with the world because then people know what is going on. Believe me, here in Europe, there is not very much news about what is going on in your country. So we need those stories. So it's very important that we share it. And yes, we need to work together and we need to work on a global net platform, but we also need to work very locally. And I love these local initiatives of what you're doing because that is very important to, you know, to reach out to women very fast. What we are doing from our part is, you know, we have all these uh, focus areas. So in the month of November, we will be focusing on women empowerment. So no economic uh, empowerment. So that might be uh, very good to, to follow up on what is going on. So that's, that's important. But we're also uh, very uh, focused on creating a um, empowerment program. So we're, uh, working on a uh, women leading and change program that will be online in groups working together for a couple of months and really and wake awaken the leadership in women so it's it's really a leadership program uh, but we love to call it a, a transformation journey you know so it's really changing mindsets and really women really taking that 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 next step uh, so we're working on that, but once that it's uh, that it's up and running, we want to have a light version that we can use in the areas, you know, that we can use locally. Uh, but we also are going to develop a heavy version uh, for governments and you know, corporate world, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, 
And the, the women that are involved in this leadership program are the female wave of change women. The storytellers, the mentors, the trainers, the teachers, you know, the wise women. And you know, wise women, and I really love that, they not only come from the corporate world or from uh, the government or politics, wise women are also represented in that very, uh, at that very grassroots level. So we will have them as involved as one. I can learn as much from women at grassroots level as I can from someone who is sitting in the boardroom. So that is very important. So we're working on that. So we're getting a lot of things will be happening uh, the next uh, coming year. And, um, you know, this is, uh, it's really exciting. And uh, we really love to have you all involved. And I'm going to make sure and I'm going to promise you that I'm going to be a, make a lot of noise about this this session, I'm going to post it everywhere that women will, will be listening to your stories because I do believe that's very, very, very important. Thank you. Thank you, Ingwin, uh, for, for sharing and for, for this reflection. Uh, uh, okay, so I asked Gula and uh, okay, so she actually, she's sharing a lot of things with us on in the chat. Um, she's speaking about the issues. Uh, She's saying that until an analyst, the women would not have her own control. Um, she will not be there. You know, when, what, what we say about empowered women. So when we say control, control is, yes, like, you know, having the, having the right to decide, to decide for her education, to decide for her job, to decide for her future. We say, you know, a lot of people may say what we say by the control. So we don't want men to control. We don't want women to control. We don't even want women to control. We want everyone to share, everyone to have this liberty to decide for themselves. Um, and in this process, we consult because my husband, my father, they're supportive. But I discuss with them. I share with them. And they don't actually... Um, they don't actually all the time disagree. They even they criticize me. They share their criticism, their their issues, um, uh, their points. But they never actually um, said that. Okay, you are being a woman. You are unable to decide. Um, if you all have heard uh, Ziauddin, Mal, the father of Malala, speaking, um, his TED talk, he said that when people are asking me. Um, what actually you have done for Malala, that why, because she's here today. And he said, don't actually ask me that what I have done. You must ask me what I haven't actually done that because, you know, she, my daughter, she's having, she's, she's a, you know, a human being like everyone. And she is having all these incredible uh, skills and everything, but every, she was just needing maybe more good efforts from my side. So ask me for those, I was responsible and maybe I was unable to do them. So, so that is actually a, a kind of thing that we believe in a society where women and men together, you know, together they go with each other and they not control, but they let each other to decide and agree. And then because the, at the end we are living in this world, which is men and women, they both are the beauty of all this. Um, I would like just to share with all these amazing women here about, uh, uh, with them about the female waves of change. The Female Waves of Change is not that much old organization. This is just recently established. But this is making a lot of, I would say, huge noise. Um, the, the women here in the Female Waves of Change, the ambassadors, the view makers, the, the women uh, in the millennial boards, um, even now we are going to have the wise circle where we are going to have some men, like even maybe, maybe there will be a men, though uh, those are known for supporting their daughters, their, their wife, their, their mothers or their sisters uh, throughout in their journey because we want them to join us and speak how they feel about when their women are empowered, their daughters are empowered and they're speaking for themselves. So we are going to have them as well. Uh, in female wave makers, like, you know, in wave makers, we're not only going to have women from Pakistan, we're going to ask and, you know, men as well, that they can also become part of this, but, but slowly we, and gradually we will be, you know, expanding because we need to establish our own system as well, because we need to have something to share with the people. Um, because Zoya said that, okay, we need to have some on ground work as well, on ground events as well. So we are working on that thing as well, um, with the guidance from the friends sitting in different um, areas and levels at the female waves of change. Um, and when I'm saying that the female waves of change is very, you know, very new, it's like a, a newborn um, child. So 
this is actually the space we have. Uh, Ingwen and all, you know, everyone sitting in the female waves of change, you know, at this level, we don't have any labels, unfortunately. You know, like fortunately, we don't have any labels. But we are all equal, but I would say we all are really, really coming. Ingwen, she's yeah. always very, really yeah. to the recommendations and the suggestions. So I'm saying this is actually an opportunity for us, for Zoya, for Shahida, for Bulnaz, and the women we initially were going yeah. to have. Yeah, yeah. We, we can actually aid, we can suggest, we can share the recommendation and we can together, you know, make it and be successful. Okay. So I think someone else is speaking in the middle. Um, so if anyone, okay. So if anyone want to speak more problem. It was Gula. It was Gula. Who... It was Gula. Okay. So we actually... Um, we, we spoke about the actions and then, yes, we will be still doing work on this. Um, uh, you know, how we can go with this onwards and any, you know, at this point, any, any other point or any other point of view, any one of you want to share with us, Shahida, Zoya, Gulnaz, anything, you know, we can share. Yes, Zoya, I think Zoya, she want to say. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I want to tell Ingrid and you that you people have my total support and I'll contribute wherever I can. Let me know wherever can we work together because together we can make this wave the highest women wave in the history. Thank you. Thank you. So yes, thank you, Zoya. Together, we, we this is one of the slogan of female waves of change that together we can. We we have this hashtag. Whenever we are posting anything about female waves of change, we are saying together we can. Um, so yes, we will do that. Any Shahida, if you want to share, or Gulaz, if you want to share any any thought. I think uh, I will second Zoya that we are here, England. You have started this, and we will take it forward. Uh, with the same spirit as you are thinking, we are in the same spirit. So for each other, everyone who is uh, present here, I'm for you here, for Zoya, for Shahida, for Shad, and for Ingwen as well. And the all women who are looking forward to us, we have to work for them and uh, we have to include them in this wave. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I want to say that let's not make this wave a, a tsunami but a wave of change let's work to, together on ground with uh, ev everyone with women with men with po policy makers at national and international level but we need to join hands to work against patriarchy against poverty and against wrong policies thank you so much thank you Yes. Um, so, Ingwen, um, I would say I have actually some, um, I would say some lessons from like, you know, spreading noise about this event. And um, I think, you know, um, next time I'll share with them that how we can uh, actually in the future, we can, um, you know, public the event so that more people can join us. But we're looking forward to the video of this program. And um, even now we have these three ambassadors as well. So they will be speaking up of in many platforms about the female waves of change. Uh, I'm not alone anymore in Pakistan for female waves of change. So, uh, yeah, actually, uh, Ingwen, uh, before we end this, uh, there are lots of things going on at female waves of change right now. Many events are going on in, in September. So we would like you just to, to share that what's going on at the female waves of change level. Um, so we, we, we know all can know more about the female waves of change currently, what's going on and what are the upcoming events? Because maybe if uh, in the upcoming events, Gulnaz and Shahida and Zoya, they can actually uh, take part and they can, uh, you know, they can actually uh, do some help with us in that thing. So I would like you to speak about the future things at female waves of change. Thank you. Yes, well, it's, uh, I already told you a little bit about what is going on for you. Well, right from now for Human Rights Month, it is um, uh, this week, there's a lot going on in Kenya. So well, they will be doing uh, as much as possible Facebook Lives to share uh, everything that is going on. Um, there is uh, next week, there's still uh, Beirut, Lebanon, who will have an event. 
and uh, on that's on Wednesday, I think, and on Thursday that will be uh, Zimbabwe that will be online again uh, with an event, uh, especially also about uh, finances and banking, bank the unbanked, because that is very important. Still, so many women in the world do not have a bank account, and that's very important. So um, uh, that is very that's that is already. Uh, scheduled and then there uh, I think the week of the 30th there will be a closing event that will again be online uh, with some speakers uh, who have already done events so that will that will be great to to really hear what came out of the events and uh, we will close with a final statement and a call to action because then it's that's actually when it all starts you know we have to start working together on uh, working on some of these issues so uh, that's when it starts and then in november it will be uh, economic empowerment so that is uh, what will be happening in the in the coming weeks or coming months and in january it will be women in health women in science women in tech women in politics women in you know all kinds of role models that's very important so if you have any contributions to that, we would love to hear that, yeah? And it's in every, you know, in our framework, as we call it, you know, economic empowerment, that's just the big framework. It can be local events, it can be uh, online events, and, uh, you know, it can be the way that you choose it to be. So that is very important and what suits you and your area, your country, your... But if you want to have it online like this, you know, we just love it because then we can share it uh, with everyone else. But I do know and I do understand that the local uh, things that are happening are also very important. Yeah, so I think I want to finish, finish off with that. So... Shad, anything more? Uh, I would like to say, to say again, once again, thank you, England. Thank you, Gunnar Sheikh. Thank you, Shahida Shah. Thank you, Zoya Tariq, for this amazing panel. Um, it's it's very overwhelming. I'm so happy, and because there are some actions, and there are this was a very fruitful discussion. Um, and I hope when we will share this on the social media on different platforms, you will have some good questions, and we will keep the, continue the discussion. Um, we are going to work together, and with this, uh, I would say we will close the event today, um, and then looking forward to work together. Yeah. Thank you very much, Shad. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone.